Good evening, welcome to a match of Dota 2. It's gonna be a very important match. It's gonna be a best out of three. It is the semi-finals in the ESWC qualifiers for West. And uh, one of these two teams will be going on to the grand finals tomorrow, which will be a best out of five between either M5 or No Tide Hunter. They are still fighting in the semi-finals, uh, which just started as well, which you can watch on Toby's stream. Um, before I say anything else, you can also watch this game inside the client if you want to. If you go to the in-game chat channel called Shiver and you right-click on my name in there, you can click watch game and you can watch the game inside the client if you want. Um, but for now, let's just see what these two teams have in store for us. We have the first pick going towards the dire side. Again. Yeah. And, uh, there we go. It's going to go away again. Just checking. Uh, because it looks like Fear is having issues with deciding which one of these uh, heroes he's going to ban first. Of course, there's only going to be two heroes that are going to be banned out first. It is uh, it's therefore a bit extra strategical decisions here. Uh, we have got ourselves a TA ban out from Skona's Elite and from EG. They ban out a Wisp, of course. They know what a TA and what a Skona's Elite can do with a Wisp, so they don't want to be facing that one. Will mean that we will see some heroes making it through that we have not seen for the rest of this day. Of course, the four heroes that we have seen banned out so far were the Naga Siren, the Rubik, the Triant Protector, as well as the Chen. And there goes still the Rubik, so it's two still of uh, three still of those heroes in the pool. As the lady is actually using EG's turn to ban. As a uh, here banning voice, we only have one more ban left before we see uh, who's gonna be picking up what. Of course, like I said, Skona's lead has first pick in this match. I'm curious to see if we're actually gonna see a uh, tree and protector. Because I mean, the previous games it was all C and B that banned those out. That one out, I should say. I'm curious if Skona would actually have picked that up, or if EG wants to pick it up. Of course, he is a very powerful hero with his living seed uh, redone. It is really not an easy hero to face. But we're gonna see. Still gonna be Lashrak first up for Skona's Elite. No hesitation there. The Chen got banned out from EG. Let's see what they're gonna go for next. I mean, of course, we still have the Dark Sea and Naga Siren in the pool as well as, as Enigma, you know, if you wanna go for Wombacombs and stuff like that. But let's see though. Let's see what they are gonna be picking up here. And they're thinking long and hard on, on this. Of course, everything they pick up now will also mean that they decide what's going to be still left in the game for Skoda. So you have to be like really tactical in deciding what do you want to pick and what do you want your opponent to not pick. It's going to be a Dark Seer first. EG's turn to pick. Yeah, that already was it, their turn to pick. So Dark Seer first. Of course, Dark Seer's had its vacuum rework, but he is still he is still Dark Seer. He still has a replica wall. Yeah, his vacuum is still there, even though less powerful. Uh, but still definitely a dangerous hero to fight against, even though having said that, all, all the games that we've seen today where he was in, I believe all games he actually lost his game. And we're going to see if um, if that is different this time. Invoker is going to be picked up here as well, so something for J.O. to play. And uh, we're going to see what Skona's Leap wants to pick up. I mean, I have to say, there's still a lot of heroes in the pool that we normally see banned out, and I... I I would like to see still, I'm going to say like every single time in the, in, the, in the drafting phase, I would like to see a Trade Protector as well as a Shadow Fiend. Those are the two heroes that I like to see. I don't know if they're actually going to be there, I don't know if they would fix in their lineup, but that's just personal preference of heroes that I would like to see played, purely because of the rework they've had, and I want to see what they can do. Okay, there goes the Trade Protector of one down, one to go. Venomancer will be picked up as well for the support. Let's see what they're going to do with this. I mean, Skona's Elite, they already picked up the Trade Protector before he was buffed. So... I'm thinking, I'm thinking what EG could, could pick up right now. Oh, hey, while we wait for that, I still have to send out a tweet that this game is actually going on, but I, think, I don't think a lot of people know that this game is actually going on right now. Oh yeah, I have to, of course, use at evil geniuses versus. In the meantime, it's going to be Titan that I guess picked up. I mean, we've seen a lot of action coming from him today, so no real surprise here. Or at least not that he's picked up. 
I, I like Titan Griffin personally. Makes for some good action. We see it's going to sleep banning again out that face is void. Of course, the time that they didn't ban him out was the time that uh, he they got beaten by that face is void, so definitely don't want to face that one. More exclamation marks. There we go. We're waiting for EG to uh, decide what they want to ban out in the first ban. There it goes, the Juggernaut. Want to be countering the stuff that's, uh, that's going to delete has been done lately. And they have been still. Juggernaut is going to be the hero to ban against them. It's going to be Dragonite that's going to get banned out by Skoda's Lead. Let's see. Evil Genius' turn again. And they're taking their time about banning these heroes. Well, Skoda's Lead, I mean, they know what they don't want to face. It's the Dragonite. Chaos Knight is still in the pool though, and I'm always comparing the two a bit, because around that level 8, level 9, they're going to be very powerful. They're going to be the heroes to roam around, so maybe we're going to see a Chaos Knight ban out there as well. As we still have most hard carries in the game, apart from that phase is void. I mean, I have to say, I haven't seen a Morphling since the, since the, since the patch. And of course he got reworked and nerfed, yes. But apparently everybody finds him nerfed enough to not pick him anymore. There goes the Shadow Shaman being banned out. And Keeper of the Light, going as the lead, not wasting time. And we've seen Keeper of the Light on EG's, on EG's side, played by Demon. A very strong solo laning uh, for that one. We've got the last ban incoming from EG right now before it's going to lead turn to pick again. Sorry, and, and every time I say Skones, I mean Skones. Skones. In, in Swedish, but I'm having a bit of issues pronouncing that properly, so sometimes it just comes out wrong. Let's see though. EG, what do they not want to face? Maybe it's going to be a Brood Mother or a Lone Druid. If they don't know what uh, Skornas Elite would be picking, you could always ban out those heroes that you just find annoying to face. And let's face it, both a Brood Mother as well as a Lone Druid are just annoying to face. It's going to be a Jakiro. They, I have to say, it's going to say picked Jakiro yesterday twice in competitive matches, also in the same tournament. Sand King gets picked up here by Skonis Lead. Of course, they're maybe fearing the Broodmother coming off from EG. And I have to say, I mean, Jakiro, he had a rework, of course, as well, that Ice Path is now pretty powerful. And it did work out for them, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be here in the semi-finals now. It's kind of a shame that he doesn't get picked up. We still have hope for my Shadow Fiend, though. Of course, you know, I know, Rigella, if you look at it realistically, he's not going to get picked up, but one can hope. Let me hope. Thank you. In the meantime, it's going to be EG that's going to be picking up next. Uh, they have got a Darkseer solo lane, Evoker, probably solo lane, and Titan in theory, could solo lane as well. So they have a lot of options here to pick up heroes. Of course, we still have the Enigma in, as well as the Enchantress, if they want to go for a jungle hero and then just lane something with the Tide Hunter there. And having said that, Darkseer and Enigma is definitely not a bad combination to have. So they might just want to do that. At the same time... Oh yeah, I said Broodmother earlier, but EG actually, their lanes doesn't leave much space for a Broodmother. And for Skorn as a lead, I mean, if you look at the lanes, we, they, they've run Trade and Protector solo lane before. The Shrek uh, Sand King is still very powerful, might be the lanes that they're going to run their top. Uh, with the Venom as having something uh, supporting either a trial in top or having something to support in the middle. So curious to see what skin is gonna, uh, Skona is going to do for uh, go for because, well, both teams kind of missed their carries so far. They got some semi-carries in there, but they need that good start. And AG, actually, they only have 10 seconds left now in their bonus time, and that's the Disruptor. Okay, so that's going to be a trial lane for them. Tide Hunter, Disruptor, and what else? It's going to be a carry. At least it's not going to be a Faces Void anymore. That would have been a good combination here. But it's going to be... Uh... Oh, it's going to still be an Anti-Mage to be fair. Oh! Whoa! Kablam! Or something! Thank you! Thank you, Mini! Shadow Fiend picked up! Happy times! Huh. I'm just going to sit here for a while. Be happy. For the people that don't know, by the way, I'm going to sit here and be happy and talk. Um, for the people that don't know, Shadow Fiend, of course, had a rework as well in the latest patch. And when he dies, he throws out a bit of a copy of his ultimate. 
It's just a little bit, li little bit less powerful. So, uh, for example, for example, I saw a movie this afternoon. And only ten seconds left for EG, by the way. Um, but I saw a movie this afternoon of a gank, four-man gank, going in on one Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend, before he died, was able to get his ultimate off, and then he died. And of course, then his ultimate goes again, and he got a triple kill from that. That's kind of cool. Let's see how they're going to deal with that. Luna gets picked up by EG, so we've seen her carrying before. Let's see if she can do a good job here, because that's what it's going to be all about. And they've got good team fight to be fair. EG is looking good on team fight at the same time. Scones Elite look good on team fight also. It's really going to be depending on the lanes. I have to say, um, of course, we have levels needing heroes on Scones Elite, but the same thing goes for EG. The only thing that's really going to be dangerous is that Lashrek and Sand King are going to be on a, a dual lane at the start, or maybe even a tri lane. That's going to be a really dangerous lane for evil geniuses. Ten seconds remaining. I am so happy with the Shadow Fiend in the game. Does that show? Yes, it does. I just had to check if my overlay was switched properly, and it was. Well, we're going to have one overlay fail, and we have uh, EG balls in the game. Well, gives us time to see who's playing what. We're going to have Mini playing the Sand King. It's going to be Region on the Shadow Fiend. Wagamama playing the Train Protector, as we have seen before. Pinoy on the Lashrak, and Fishbone is going to be taking on the role of the Venomancer. No real surprise there. EG Dota Online. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I mean, um, for example, Thursday. Uh, last Thursday was the last game of Star Ladder. was between Skonis Elite and EG. After that, there was a King of the Hill from Absolute Legends organized between Skonis Elite and EG. So they have had a lot of matches in these past few days. So these teams know each other through and through. Even though, having said that, of course, there's, there is the patch in between. So we're going to see different things from the teams, I would imagine. Because everybody picks it up, uh, you know, takes stuff in differently. But still... The Demon Love Spiders. In one of the games, in case you're wondering what they're referring to, in one of the games, Demon played the Keeper of the Light and at some point was locked in between spiders and could not get out and died because of spiders. So, um, For, again, uh, for the people that are asking in the chat, you can indeed watch this game in-game, in the Dota 2 client. Uh, we, um, or sorry, you, you can go to the in-game chat channel uh, called Shiver or go to gamers, either way, I'm in both. Uh, you can right click on my name, my name is just Cheever, so you'll be able to find me in there, and you can click watch game, and you'll be able to watch the game in game, you even can have my sound in there if you want as well, but you can be your own cameraman, you can be your own caster, and you can you can actually also cast if you want to do that. That is all possible. Uh, but yeah, that is everybody of Skonis Elite, we're gonna jump ourselves over to the Radiant side. Well, there we have ourselves an AFK person, and we have ourselves some hassle with some people not having enough time to uh, to have this. Of course, uh, for both teams, I believe uh, they have got their own real life commitments, and um, Demon is now AFK for five minutes, apparently. So, so. Um, Less than that. Okay, well, in the meantime, we can go over these heroes, see who's playing what. We have got ourselves a Disruptor, played by Beatis. We have got ourselves J.O. on the Invoker, Faceless, or Headless even. Well, he has hair, so I'm not sure. I think it's Faceless then. Uh, but he's going to be mid, no real surprise there. Fear is going to be on the Luna, no real surprise there either. Misery, who is standing in here, is going to be playing the Tidehunter, which will leave Demon to play the Darkseer. So that is going to be it. That is going to be uh, the lanes. Uh, well, the lanes, not really the lanes. It's for the lanes. It's going to be Demon Solo, most likely, with J.O. Solo mid. And a tri lane for the other three here. And I say Demon Solo, of course, he's going to then be soloing the hard lane. That, that's at least what I would be expecting. Uh, for uh, Skona, I'm, I'm expecting Wagamama to try the solo hard lane on his uh, tree and protector. These three going to be together on a tri lane. And uh, this guy mid, mid maybe one of them roaming around to help out region, depending on how hard of a, um, how easy or hard of a start he has. 
because he's going to be up for his invoker. Should be able to be fine, though. Yeah, I don't think Pino has a lot of time tonight. So some of you might know the Scornus Elite guys, or at least some of them are uh, having a fairly active Saturday Night Life, and actually perform. Sometimes I've seen, or at least I've saw, I've seen them perform. Not not all, but like t two of them. And, and shuffling. Never seen shuffling before that. Wasn't during the daytime though, but maybe they're gonna go for nighttime there that as well. So we have a story, we have a go, and we can see who Prepare is going battle. where. No surprise, region is going mid. Okay, everybody go mid. That's a fun thing. And the donkey is going mid too. Everybody go mid all. And that donkey is being left behind. Oh, it's sad. But yeah, 4 AG, no real surprise there. Trial lane, solo lane. Solo lane. It's that simple. I'm checking out if they were going for Roshan, perhaps? Oh. This is, by the way, giving souls to the Shadow Fiend. One hit, one deny. Soul. One hit. Oh, wait a second. Luna, you are in the wrong place. Here comes the Titus Bell, but Luna, one more hit needed. Kinetic Field is there. They're going to go for someone else. Many is going to be the target team. Many is for Blood. J.O. picking it up. Misery will go down as well. One for one right now. Espino is on the run here, too. There goes the Iron Shell still, though. Disruptor. Kinetic Field again is locking in two people right here. J.O. will hit them from the side. We'll get some hits right back, though. Trio Protector has got his life seat up if he wants to have it. Iron Shell on Demon. And he wants to go for Pino. Pino will be fine though. Tower hits on Demon Steel. There goes more hits, and there goes one more hit, and it's Pino that picks up the kill. And it's two for th two for one. And B is on the way out right now. No more mana. Just had one more mana needed for the train protector for his life seed. Here's it gonna go. They're gonna go. Slow him down slightly. Will be enough. Nova. I mean Nova. I mean uh, Luna's and Beam and Luna will still fake up the Shrek. In the meantime, Jo coming in from the back again. Shadow Fiend taking a lot of damage, and he is gonna drop here, or is he? I yeah, he is dead. And it's gonna be Fishbone that's being locked inside a kinetic field. Fishbone all the way out. Three for two for now. Fishbone, you are not gonna be able to get away from this one. Gush in the face, and you die. Double kill for misery, and the rest is going to backing up. Four for two. All because that Shadow Fiend and the Venomans awards. In the meantime, I mean, it did give Wraith Band 2 versus the Shadow Fiend, and he is now alone farming in the middle lane. I'm gonna put it the last, it's in the nice. Oh, I'm so happy that I already switched overlays. And everybody's going back to their respective lanes as if nothing happened. And just to give a bit more overview of what just happened, Luna got a kill, Invoker got a kill, and Invoker even was in on all four kills, so got the experience from all at least. Um, yeah, and, and extra gold. Well, of course, depends on how Luna was positioned. She's getting that as well. And it was only the Dark Seed and the Tide Hunter that died there. Dark Seed, of course, I mean, is not that big issue to have those people die. And actually, for Skona, the only one that didn't die was the Train Protector. The rest of them all died once. So uh, that is the case. That is the start of the game. We have indeed Venomancer helping out uh, Region here in the mid lane against SJ, who is level 2. Shadow Fiend is level 3, though. I mean,. Yes, he died, but he also got a kill and assist, and he was here before the Invoker was. It's going to be Tidehunter and Disruptor farming in the jungle. They can do that. It's going to be Luna on the bottom lane, and Trail Protector will be there as well. And she, he specced his Elite Sheet first, so doesn't have his yeah, invisibility just yet. We're going to check out the top lane, though. It's going to be Burst Strike. Darkseer will kill off the, 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 the Sad King. <laughs> what, did he just get a double kill? And three splats of blood turn red on the floor for the top lane. Darkseer getting two kills and uh, he only died after the other kills so was able to get the experience from that as well and everybody TPing back towards the top lane. So uh, one for two in the meantime this is gonna be looking dangerous for Wagamama. He cannot turn invisible just yet. Leech Sheet was there again. Here's is not gonna be enough. His living armor not gonna be enough or is it? Right clicks are there and there's the losing beam and that's the kill. Tied on to picking it up. And EG looking strong for this first game so far, and it's gonna be Lashrek that's gonna get vacuumed back into the iron shells that are up on creeps as well as on Demon himself. And Mini will be backing off, has itself still up. Already having to use that one after just TPing back, imagine that. A lot of action happening in this lane, in this game. I hope I don't miss too much of it. And check out the top lane, Wagamama walking back, doesn't have it, well, does have enough gold for TP, does not want to spend it though. He's not going to be getting that much experience for now anyway, and we'll be getting some experience uh, when the creep wave hits his tower. And he's actually walking almost alongside a creep wave. There's a creep wave. He's already back in. 
and we'll be hi hiding behind this tower until the creep wave is there. In the meantime, it's gonna be, uh, I don't know what just, uh, what he just brought, uh, no less, another clarity potion, perhaps, yeah. What the crew you just brought, don't key up. Bottle up, wow, I am really messing up my words tonight, sorry for that. Bottle up on the Shadow Fiend. <laughs> That got brought there by the donkey, most likely. And again, Wagamama getting forced back, but he stays in experience range this time. Level 2 for now, but level 4 already up on the Luna. And she's almost level 5 even. That's going to be really painful, loosened beams. Although, living armor will help keep Tree and protect her alive for now. In the meantime, Scone is the lead. I mean, like I said, they're very level dependent. Top lane, a bit less level dependent. But as we've seen just now, they, they just got killed off by one Darkseer. They have got that Imba combination of Burrow Strike, Split Earth, Eating. Everything, but the dark sea just uh, demon just killed them both both off, make him pay. I mean, yes, he died, but it's it's worth it. It's worth it for two reasons. I mean, one, you have um, oh, no rune gonna be bottom. I mean, one, you ha you have got what? Well, it's gonna be taking a long time before uh, Lashrak and Sand King are gonna try that that again because you know they just find out that found out it wasn't that profitable. So they'll be less careful, so you'll be able to stay more in experience range. And of course you got the kill, so extra gold for you. 2-2-2 two, two, two is what the Dark Seer is at right now. 4 assists, 2 kills, 2 deaths. And the Shrek just uh, content in keeping the farm then going. Uh, we have got the highest farmer in the game, or at least last hitter in the game I should say. It's going to be at 26-15 to 15 on the Shadow Fiend, with Invoker only being 15-2. to two. Of course he's first as a dual lane, so not that ideal. And it's going to be regen picked up by the tide. Train protected not fast enough to get there. And the wards are there, obviously. Sentry wards even. Almost disappearing. It's disappeared. Luna, in the meantime, keeping up with the form of the Shadow Fiend. Not as much, but still 25 for 18. And more importantly, she has got a kill in the procket. And actually, having those kills upon there already, I'm actually going to already pop off the net worth. Because that's just more important right now. As we see, J.O., he is highest up on the net. He was highest up on the net worth after the donkey brought uh, the, the ring of Aquila to the Shadow Fiend. But he is very high up, higher than we, you would expect with only 17 losses. But that's just because he was in there for the kills and hasn't died yet. So net worth is a bit more important right now than those last hits. Here we can see what really counts. Shadow Demon definitely not doing bad though. Gets a cold snap, but Fishbone will be there just in case. I actually thought about doing a raise there, but it was too late. I shall will harass Mini, here they go. Are they gonna be able to get it? Nope. Boots up on both targets and oh yeah, I was gonna say some armor being put up on Mini, but Mini taking a lot of damage from that iron shell. I can't chase down uh, Demon because he already got chased out by the iron shell. Would have been running next to that iron shell, would have killed him also. Tranquil boots up on the Luna. She just wants to continue her farm constantly. We have Wagamama in the meantime road training. He has got his nature's guys up, so we'll be able to be invisible and get experience still if he wants to. In the meantime, this lane here, lane. This creep pool, creep stack, is getting stacked massively every minute. Shadow Fiend picking up an invisibility rune. It's not invisible just yet though. J.O. getting some harassment. Do they want to go for this? Maybe. Looking to be very aggressive here. So could have to just watch out here. Cold snap there. J.O. turning his aggressiveness around for him. Raise misses. One more cold snap going off. In the meantime, Darkseer taking a lot of harassment here. Will it be a stun? No, a stun and... and uh, he's gonna try to TP out. Is it will be enough? No, it will not be enough. It will, as, as in, the TP will not be enough because he still dies. Lashrak picking up the kill. And that was the Burrow Strike. And the Edict and the Split Earth that was talking about. Still almost get out, got out of there though. Quite impressive with that HP that he has. The shield doing, doing the works. Edict will make sure the tower will, uh, will drop. Of course, there's now a 5 second glyph up, so the Edict will not be as powerful as it normally was. And, uh, well, creatures will still have to do their, their job and not rely on the Edict all too much. Magamama being uh, showing himself here for a bit. Radiance top tower is under attack. And the mini is gonna pull the creep wave away so that Lashrak can take down this tower. Edict helping out, and that will be indeed the first tower going down to Lashrak, picking up the gold in the meantime. J.O. finds Mini here, gonna get a burst like in the face, the right clicks are there as well, cold snap going off for Mini, Mini you're out of your w out of your way here, you're out of your league. Ray's going down, Mini gets the living armor, tornado going up still though, and that's the iron shell picking up the kill. Gale goes off on the dark seer who's still around there, but surges himself, or can't surge himself, surges himself away towards the, the dire jungle even. In the meantime it's gonna be uh, the trio protected that gets killed on the bottom lane by the way, but we're just following this action here, even though the action is about over. 
But on the bottom lane, it was uh, three versus one, and a train protector went down. And I wasn't able to do anything against it, obviously. Otherwise, he would have done that, probably. I'm going to say three, because there's the disruptor as well. Glimpse was used for that one. And that's a Luna level eight, by the way, against a tree on level three. So pretty painful. In the meantime, mid lane is going to be a tornado that's going to pick up the Lushrak, but the Darkseer will still go down. Lushrak and Edict doing the works. And Shadow Fiend level 6. So I'm going to just put up this one shortly. And it's the Luna and the Darkseer that are definitely ahead on those levels. Mini's going to dodge the Kinetic Fields. going to get in Nature Sky, so we'll be invisible for now. Central Ward is there, though. He cannot move out of there. Uh, well... Unless uh, everybody moves back, which they do. And there we have Tidon to coming in. Tidon to going down. The Shrek just rotating from lane to lane, getting those kills, dominating streak right now. He is five for two. And I do believe he got all those five kills after dying twice. And he did just getting some farm inside that jungle. Oops, oops, oops. Gotta find friends, friends in the jungle. Nope. Sentry ward being placed there also. They think they have a ward there, but no, that's not the case. He just saw them. It's, it's night time, but he was just close enough. Jo, gonna be moving there. I'm clearing out those wards. Donkey, where are you gonna go? In the meantime, Living Seed goes up on the Luna. Is there an ultimate? No, level 4. And there's an ultimate! And that is gonna be an absent of being casted. Living Armor keeping him alive for a while with Venomancer's Guild that picks him up. Still got, got a kill up on the Train Protector though. And that Living Armor kept him alive so much longer than he should by the looks of it. At least it seemed that way. It definitely seemed that way. Tied on to level 5. Wanted to be level 6, of course, for that Ravage. 10 minutes in. Level 6 almost up on the Disruptor as well. And it's going to be experience grab. It's definitely going to be in favor of EG, even though not as much as I was expecting. Those last, that last kill. That last kill on Luna. Luna was the highest level in the game, and they killed her off. Yeah, that is going to be painful indeed. Why don't we see a dot here, though? It's confusing. Confusing. I'm still waiting to see the Shadow Fiend die, by the way. Nothing mean against Region, but just before, because of his rework. I want to see how that goes. Because he's, of course, not a gank target number one, obviously. You don't really want to do that to yourself if you manage to get his ulti off. Like, Mama will be fine, yes. But, it's still... It's so tempting just to see how much it does. How it works out. Geo though, very careful. He's going for four stuff, finish up his face boots. Let's see what this guy has. He is building towards the BKB. Nothing really surprising. Needs to have that BKB to be able to cancel his ultimate to begin with. Races does hit this time. Just a Rasman. Minnie's gonna sit very far back. Hoping for someone to show up, but nobody is gonna. There's gonna be four heroes though in this radiant jungle. I say four, it's actually five in the middle lane now. Four in the middle lane and one in the bottom lane. Tornado going through, doesn't hit on anything. Cold Snap does hit though as well as the Gush. Shadow Fiend, Ravage, hits on two. TPs are gonna get in. Kinetic Field there though, and there's the kill, and there's the ultimate. As well. But not as much damage as I thought it would do. That's a bit of a shame. And Fishbone will be backing out of that one. Well, thank you, EG, for making my, uh, my requests come through. Tr true, but I am not really. Uh, nah, nah, eh. Living Seed on the Shrek. Central Ward being placed. There's the cold snap. There's the kinetic field as well. In that kinetic field with you two. It's a static storm, and there's no escaping that one. Darcy picks a Pino tornado going through, and Mini, you will die as well. Oh, nice burst strike, though. Dust being popped, and Mini will still die. Burst strike on three, though. I have to just give credit for that one. And TP out from the, from Demon towards the top lane again to defend it. And still, towers are even. Gold, though, spiking up again. So where's that 3k in favor of VG, especially after those last uh, after that last kill, last kills I should say, three kills in total in the middle lane, slowing down the BKB of the Shadow Fiend. Haste. And the ultimate of Wagamama, I actually he's not there yet. There it is. I was gonna say it doesn't play that big of a role yet, but I was not expecting him to not be level five yet, not not be level six yet. Rather, he is level six now though. Tide Hunter not levels is level six actually used the ravage there of Dyer's course it did and that's gonna be a lot of creeps for that Luna and with that level two Moonglaive she can just kill that off fairly easily 
Especially also with the Tranquil Boost, so it doesn't really have to heal up anywhere else, but in the forest. And gets level 11 with that, by the way. I'm just gonna put up this one, level 11, highest level in the game, highest level on the Dire side is level 9, so massive difference right there. And it's not even on the hero that was mid. Of course the hero that was mid uh, was the one that was on a 2 versus, uh, versus 1 lane, so it's gonna be slightly behind there. But uh, still, Luna is gonna be uh, highest. And she was versus the solo lane. Something to note. I'm gonna be putting back the net worth. Because it's also the Luna that's top in the charts there. With the still Shadow Fiend close behind that one. Even though Shadow Fiend it feels like he is he is still behind. I mean he's got he died twice. Got 70 to do last hit, so hello. Dark Seer, where are you gonna go? The Shrek, gonna try to get a stun, TP out there, and there's not gonna be any interruption now that the Yeah, now that the stun is already on cooldown. No kill for Pinoy on the top lane, not on Demon anyway. Tier Tower does, or Tier One Tower does get protected though. <laughs> Just like the mid tower. More awards, visible and more awards. It's level four awards also, so should not be underestimated. We'll be able to stop this pushing from happening. Should be. Here comes Pinoy as well. Gil doesn't hit though. Four stuff forward. He's gonna be fine. Luna just continuously farming, also going for BKB. Does not want to be interrupted when she's running around with her clips on. A smoke up for EG. Four heroes there. They find Pino. There's the guys. There's a kinetic field static storm, and that is a kill. Well, no static storm, but uh, thunder strike rather. Still disruptor skill. Disruptor actually picked up the last hit as well. Quick use of a smoke. Got the kill with it. Nice. And they're gonna be able to maybe get a tier one tower with that as well. Even though, yeah, there's a creep wave again. Thunderman's ward being placed behind the tower now, but it's only a two that they have to deal with there, so should be fine. To tower. They don't have an edict, but they don't really need that. In the meantime, though, tower is getting pushed in on the on the top lane rather. But the Shrek not there. The Shrek dead, so tower is not going to drop that fast. And tier one is, and now Mini has to back off already because otherwise the tower is going to get uh, help, and that's not what you want. That's not what you want to find yourself in the meantime. It's going to be a welcome moment. It's going to try to get away from Fear. Fear has a losing beam if he wants to. Gets his level 8. Na gets his nature's guy. Should be able to stay away. Should be able to stay alive. And it's, it's like a moment that is able to juke this. There's his ultimate. As well as the leech seed. There's a the Shrek stun. Nova Edict will be in time. There is an Eclipse up. Kine kinetic Field does lock the two in. As well as the Static Storm. Wakamama cannot get out of his way for Rose for Pino. He still has his Edict on Nova. And there's Eclipse! But it was Pinoy that picks up a double kill. The shots are going down there as well. Tornado going through, hits the tray of protector, still kills, and Pinoy is gonna get Mana Bear Stun, doesn't hit anymore because a cold snap was there, and J.O. picks up a double kill in return. Two for two, with two heroes picking up a double kill, but EG coming out ahead because they got the later kills. And I have to say, well, actually. With having their Luna die, it might not, might not even be worse than Luna, who actually picked up an Overclub. He's gonna go for the Mantisar maybe next, picked up a Yasha at least. Got extra movement speed, tied onto Invisibility Rune, gonna fall off Fishbone, see what he can do. He still has a Ravage, he has a Gush, he has everything. Here comes the Darkseer, there's the Ravage, there's the Anchor Smash, and that is gonna be a kill. Venomous still uses his ultimate before he dies, so that is something. And here comes Wagamama, TP out from the Tide Hunter, should be able to do so. And uh, they're go not gonna find anything anymore, because Darkseer searches himself away. Mana boots used. More armor. I'm actually quite surprised he doesn't do his armor on the on the towers. But again, heroes are more important, I guess. Bro strike hit in the dark seer. TP incoming also from the invoker. Surge away. Vacuum does not hit anything. EMP also not hitting anything because of it. And Skona is still staying around here. Maybe he wants to find something out. There's five heroes here now in the middle lane. The one TP stood a well lane to defend that. And the rest, they know the Ravage is on cooldown. So they might want to try to go for something. Jail going for a sheep stick. By the looks of it, actually picked up a Sage Mech. Maybe he wants to go for a Yule Scepter first. We'll find out soon, though. Disruptor is going for warding position, so he's uh, placing wards as he should. Luna, we already saw what Luna has. Let's see, Tidehunter is going to have a cloak, maybe going for a pipe. Could be. Could just be having a uh, cloak, uh, ordinate cloak, to be dealing with that uh, magical damage coming off from this guy, the Shadow Fiend. 
Who's almost got his BKB complete, by the way. JO forced stuff complete, we already saw him. That is everybody of the Radiant team. Or was it? No, mechanism being built on the dark screen. So that is everybody of the Radiant team, item-wise. Just want to check if I missed anything item-wise, which is why I go over all the heroes and what they have. Ravage again in 40. Three heroes here of Skonis Elite. We have drums and the uh, face boots up on this little track. was doing quite nice, but actually, we saw him being 5 to 1 at some point, and now he's 7 to 5, so he's died quite a few times since the last time we saw him being dominating. We already saw Fishbone, he's warding, doing his duty, and 300 gold left for the Shadow Fiends. In the meantime, top lane, Tornado going through, JO being ganked there. He's an EMP, uh, oh wow. I was gonna say he's a he's a wax invoker though. Oh oh oh, donkey, gonna be fast enough? You think so? No, he cannot be. Maybe he thinks he is. I don't think he is. But yeah, he's a wax invoker, so he's extra fast. So the sun didn't hit and they couldn't kill him anymore. He went invisible and no dust, and that's a kill. As in, that is an escape rather, not a kill rather. Tornado, Phantom Man's ulti still goes off, but the Ravage is there, vacuum in as well, and that is two heroes dead! I think so anyway, yep, Darkseer you're getting a double kill for that while the Shrek stun does hit Tidehunter, taking a lot of damage, but should be fine, I think, get some, get some uh, earn charge, get some mechanism charge, I mean, there goes Wagamama, Lead Sheet is there, Deafening Blast going through though, will slow the chase down, and there comes Darkseer, you wanted to go for this Living Seed up on the Shrek, vacuum up into the high ground, doesn't work, gets a creep down though. Brewer strike up on the dark seal. The on is still gonna hit. Tidehunter gush up on mini. There's a kinetic field again. Locking Pino in place as well as the static storm. There he goes. Disruptor picking up the kill. Wagamama doing what he can, but he is dusted. He cannot get away from this one as Urge on top of him and Invoker gets the last hit. Four heroes down. Well, four heroes in the jungle in the, the radiant side, but I think four heroes down, yeah, on the side of the dire. But the only Sand King being the one to stay alive. And Venomans are to open the hunting season. Tornado, kinetic field, mini burst eggs is, is well stuff out, but there's the glimpse back. There's the right clicks, will be enough? I think it is. Yes, it is. Disruptor picking up the kill. Disruptor 3 for 1 for 8. So it's been in 11 kills out of the 22. And EG looking strong for this one. Same time, Tide Hunter. Farming top. Going for the level 11. Wanting to have that level 2 ravage. And there is a BKB complete, so going for it indeed. First Ogre Club, then Yasha, and then BKB still. Just wanted to have the Yasha for the extra movement and attack speed. More movement speed. She was already is so fast. And a Shadow Fiend, just not really working out so far. I mean, he has a BKB. And the mini ultis that he throws out actually do surprisingly little damage. I'm quite disappointed. Even though I have seen it work before, but I guess it's more like if you have that level advantage. Fishbone in the meantime, gotta get forced back. The Impeding Tornado doing a lot of damage up on him. There's some there's some mana boots. And it's actually Lushrek that's no longer here in this middle, but there's still four heroes here of Skona to lead. As well as a tier 1 tower, so it's easier to TP to for uh, EG. Oh, mini overextend the engine. Cold snap goes off. Right clicks are there. There's kinetic field. He's not gonna get hit in that one. Burst strike does hit up on the Luna. Glimpse back from mini. And there is the ultimate, as well as the ultimate from region. And so far, it's only the trade protector that has, that's that. There goes the Tide Hunter, as well as the Disruptor. Vandermancer drops, and it's region that's on the run. 3 for 2 so far. And they have not enough damage, and yeah, you're gonna die. Luna getting a triple kill, getting three out of the four kills that they just did. And it wasn't good initiation from Skona as well. I mean, they had the train protector with his overgrowth. They had uh, no epicenter though, but they did have the Shadow Feet ulti in the midst of all that with full, full, um, what's it called, souls, as well as the Venom Master ulti there. It's just, it wasn't enough. It was not enough. In the meantime, whoa, Invoker picking out the last in the line. It was the Lashrak that gets picked up. By Jo here with the help of Demon, Vacuum in. And that's it. And that's tier two tower down. Only one tier two tower left on the side of Skona's elite. We say GG. Skona's elite says GG. That means that we're gonna be going to a game number two. Because this is a best out of three. It was an early GG, by the way. Maybe they would have been able to do it, but uh, we've no we know that they're uh, they're a bit short on time, so maybe that's the reason they just say let's go to game number two.
and uh, we'll try again there. We'll go for a faster lineup there. So this was game number one of EG versus Konas Elite, and it is a semi-final match for the ESWC qualifiers. And uh, my name is Shiva. I'm a Ghost Gamers caster. You can subscribe to my YouTube on uh, on YouTube YouTube.com slash Shiva Gaming. Yeah, where's the DC? We're waiting for the DC from region before we can actually continue this. And there it goes. It's actually other people that disconnect first. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a game number two. Stay tuned for more Dota 2 action. I'm just gonna wait until the throne explodes. And uh, yeah, I have to say though, AG looked very strong, and they just had the dominance over the game. They uh, owned the lanes and therefore got the rest. And of course, that massive fight at the start kind of helped out. Gave them a good start in the lanes. Definitely. We're just gonna wait until the middle tower has fallen. Until the throne explodes. Come on, people. Apparently, Region is not all too happy that maybe they left earlier, so it's gonna slow them down. We're gonna slow us down too. And while they're still in the game, we cannot have a game number two. And there goes the towers. Tier 4 is now getting harassed. With a Luna that can go so fast. And especially with Alacrity there too. Alacrity, sorry. And that's gonna be a mystery. An anchor around his neck. That's gonna be that. Manta style, run over. Still though, patience is a virtue. Is under attack. Yeah, that's a kill. I still have one. I was gonna say double kill, unstoppable. But he goes continuing on. Man still on cooldown, as in um, on, on not enough mana for that either. But yeah, there's the legacy again, and that is gonna be finally the zone exploding. Uh, actually, it was EG that promoted Vagamama for the people in the chat. Anyway, we are going to be going towards a game number two. And it's going to be again EG versus Konos Elite in the semi finals of the ESWC qualifier for the western part of this world. And uh, we'll be right back with more Dota 2 action coming right up.